This is Daybreak, and thank you for staying with us. The hashtag on X is Daybreak. The SMS code is double two four double two at Citizen TV Kenya and at Ayub. Abdikadir this morning in studio with me. Fatuma Ndangiza is a lawmaker at the South African Legislative Assembly from Rwanda. Good morning. Morning. Lovely to have you here on the broadcast. Thank you. And much appreciated. Also with me in the studio is Zipora Kering, who is a lawmaker at the East African Legislative Assembly from Kenya. Good morning. Morning. Happy to have you. I'm happy to be here too. And thanks for making time. Honorable Maina Karobia is equally a lawmaker at the East African Legislative Assembly based in Arusha, Tanzania, also from Kenya. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. And much appreciated. Shortly we'll be joined by Guy Deng, who is a lawmaker also serving with the honorable members here at the East African Legislative Assembly from South Sudan. Ladies and gentlemen, your time is appreciated. Let's now go the East Africa way and many thanks for your company here. Um, we'll be shortly talking about... Um, the membership um, and your legislative agenda, and that is largely, which largely happens in Arusha and Tanzania. But first I begin with you, Honorable uh, Zipporah Kering. Your sittings at the moment are happening in Nairobi County, in Nairobi. How symbolic is this? How significant is this, moving from Arusha to Tanzania and holding your sessions here in Nairobi? Okay, thank you so much, Abdi. I'm happy to be here. Uh, about uh, East Africa is that this is a, this is a this is a parliament that is composed from the seven partner states, yeah. and its headquarters is in Arusha. Mm -hmm. And uh, the treaty allows yeah. that the sittings is the, 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 at least one sitting is done in Arusha, yeah. we, which is its headquarters. But it also provides that there is a rotational basis. Mm -hmm where you go around the partner states and you sit in the partner states. Like in last December, we were sitting in Rwanda. Yeah. And this time around, we are sitting in Kenya, Nairobi. And uh, sitting in Kenya is that symbolic because one, uh, we got an opportunity to be addressed yeah. by the summit member, yeah. who is actually the president who does the, who did the opening yeah. and actually did, uh, did the first preamble or the first, uh, the first sitting that we had, he came to open, and when he comes to open a sitting, he also highlights the agendas of the East Africa, mm. and that he would also want the assembly to propel or to actually uh, uh, make sure that the community's agenda yeah. is driven towards its or, uh, where it's headed to. Yeah, we'll talk about the integration, the establishment of a federation where trade is eased, talking about the tariffs and, and how you aid. As, as lawmakers based in Arusha, in, in terms of easing some of these uh, uh, processes with regards to the economic development, now that we have Somalia, which is now the new member on the block. Honorable Fatuma Ndangiza from Rwanda, then, I mean, w what does it communicate about having that um, sort of special outlook with regards to members from different countries aspiring for one federation under the East African community where you members of parliament debate issues that are related to the East African community. How special is it sitting in Arusha, Tanzania? Yeah, I think the first point to make is that uh, the East African community has a vision of having a united, yeah. integrated, secure and prosperous region. And therefore, when you talk about united, even the outlook at the assembly, we have to look united. Yeah. And our motto is one people, one destiny. And that's why during the election of Weala members, yeah. you know we are elected by our parliaments, yes. national parliaments back at home, and we serve a mandate of five years. Yeah. But during the, the election process, which is also catered for in our treaty, the treaty is just like our constitution, the East African treaty, mm -hmm. is to make sure that... Uh, election process is as inclusive as possible so that you really show the face of East Africa. Yeah. And they talk about having diverse representation. So we have like nine members in every partner state mm -hmm. uh, who are represented in the, in the East African Co Community Legislative Assembly. Yeah. And among these members, you have representation from political parties, yes. both the ruling and the opposition. Yes. You have re representation from women, mm -hmm. at least a minimum of 30%. Then you have youth. You can see Honorable Maina is here. Yes. <laughs> then you have even other vulnerable groups like persons living yeah. with disability. Uh, you have members from different backgrounds. So that really, because East Africa is a people 
centered and also private sector led community. Therefore, even as we represent our people, the more we have representation from various constituencies, then at least we can f truly represent our people with the three core mandate, just like any other assembly. Yeah. We do legislation, mm -hmm. make sure that we provide an enabling legal framework mm -hmm to be able to attain the four pillars of integration, mm. the customs union, yeah. the common market protocol, the monetary union, and finally the political federation. We also yes. do oversight to ensure that the monies, because we also have a, function, a budgeting function, yeah. to ensure that the, our partner states, especially the various institutions yeah. of the yes. community, mm -hmm. can effectively spend the money on priorities yes. that really impact on the lives of our people, yeah. but you also do representation yeah. of close to 350 million citizens yes. of the East African community. And as you said at the beginning, yeah. right now we have eight partner states, including the three former ones, yeah. which is Kenya, mm -hmm. Republic of Uganda, United Republic of Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, Republic of South Sudan, Democratic Republic of Congo, and of recent, the new kid on the block, yeah. Somalia. Yeah. So we have eight partner states. Yes. And as Honorable Zipora says, in the assembly, we are represented by, we represent seven partner states, yes. Yes. This which is nine times seven, so yeah. you have 63, 63. members. Yeah. But you also have what you call ex-official members. Mm -hmm. These are the East African ministers of the seven respective partner states. Then you also have the uh, Secretary General yeah. of the East African community yeah. and the Council to the community, yeah. which makes it around 70. In this, total, that is about, about uh, 72. Yeah, 72. 79, yeah, they're about. Yeah. So yeah. the only difference with our ex official members yes. is that for us, we can vote, for them, they cannot vote. Yeah. But the purpose is to make sure that as we legislate, yeah. as we oversight, we are able to present our reports on our findings, on how we see integration to the ministers yeah. so that they implement and they oversee the implementation in Thank the various you. partner states. Okay. And w w w interesting points there because the ministers do report to the respective appointing authorities, that is the respective uh, countries that make up the community. We'll talk more about that and ha how it happens and also the voting process and uh, whether it's as political as it is back in our parliaments in our respective countries, be it in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, South Sudan, uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo and, uh, and, and Rwanda. Coming to you, Honorable Maina Karobia, Honorable Fatuma mentions the question of oversight and, and this is a key assignment for any parliament across the world because being the representation of the people, oversight is key in the essence of holding governments to account. How do you exercise that? I mean, it's one parliament with a cocktail of lawmakers from different countries, but how then do you converge your oversight responsibility? Is it towards the respective countries or you are more, fo more or less focused on the entire community itself and how do you execute it in terms of its implementation? Yes, uh, thank you for hosting me. I have to say that uh, the assembly, as you have rightfully said, like any other parliament in the world, our mandate is to uh, register it, to represent and also carry out uh, oversight. Mm -hmm. And uh, our mandate is actually drawn from the Treaty of Establishment yes. uh, in Chapter 9 uh, of the treaty, from Articles 48 up to the 65th yeah. uh, Article. But on the functions of the Assembly, yes. they are in the Article 49 of the Treaty of Establishment uh, of, uh, of the East Africa community. Yes. So in terms of oversight, we do carry out our oversight. We have the mandate of uh, asking questions. Uh, we also have uh, the mandate of uh, perusing uh, any documents yes. that are uh, owned by the Assembly and uh, that, are, that concerns the general operations of the, of the community. Yeah. And uh, this, uh, uh, the Council of Ministers have a, a time of answering questions. Mm -hmm. uh, we carry out our, our oversight mandate on all organs and anything that appertains to the East African community. Even when some of these matters 
uh, in the partner states uh, at the sovereign level, yeah. but they are cross-cutting mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, the general operations of the East African community. Of course, uh, our issues are considered by the Council of Ministers mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, for implementation. And also, after that, they are submitted to the, to the heads of uh, state summit, yes. uh, which now consists of all the presidents of East African community. So uh, I want to say that uh, the business of the assembly yes. is as serious as it can uh, make your life difficult. Uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, uh, if you don't uh, work on the integrity yeah. uh, of any office bearer anywhere, so our mandate is just like the parliament, as we know it, yes. even in our, like in our national, in our nations. So uh, our oversight is as strong as that. And I want to say that uh, it is incumbent of any uh, office bearer yeah. uh, within the East African community to realize that uh, the, uh, the assembly has its mandate mm -hmm. drawn or uh, empowered by the Treaty of Establishment. Okay. In chapter nine of the yeah. of the treaty. Honorable Zipora Kering, I'm, I'm looking at the nine ex-official members. Uh, they include seven ministers or assistant ministers, each from the partner state uh, responsible for the ESC affairs, the secretary general of the community, and the council to the community, who is more or less the chief legal advisor. But given that there is an important matter that regards the East African community, how do these ministers then report back? to their appointing authorities. For example, for our case in Kenya, who is the minister who will go there? Um, is he a member of our current cabinet? And with regards to the matter that you discussed before the parliament in Arusha, Tanzania, then how does he communicate back? How, how, how does he convey that message? What's the interlink between you holding him to account and him presenting the same message to back to Nairobi and the same applying for Kigali, Kinshasa, Bujumbura, Kampala, and Juba. Thank you so much, Abdi. Um, here in Kenya, we have a, we have a minister who is responsible uh, responsible for the ESC matters, and that is uh, the CS Benina Malonza. Okay. And I want to say, as we have said, these are ex-official members. Mm -hmm. When we have a sitting like we are sitting in Nairobi this time around now. The Council of Ministers, this is the opportunity now for the Council of Ministers to come to the plenary, to the floor of the House, mm -hmm. that as we debate the motions, the bills, yeah. the statements, the questions, they are seated there. Actually, as it is, they are all supposed to be seated there. But because of the various uh, assignments that they have yeah. back in their personal states, normally they interchange. Like for yesterday, we had a minister from Uganda, mm -hmm. we had a minister from Tanzania, and we had also a minister from uh, Burundi. From Burundi. Yes. And they were all seated. Mm -hmm. And I want to say the three who were seated now are seated there, uh, you know, listening or going through the, the, the process of the plenary and the questions and the motions and the bills. Yeah. From there now, we, we have the chair. Of the, of the Council of Ministers. Mm -hmm. And for this time round, it is the Minister for South Sudan, Republic of South Sudan, yeah. where we have also the chair summit from the same country. Mm -hmm. And uh, when this Council of Ministers have their meeting, because they are love their meeting now, that is when what is discussed in the assembly is escal escalated to the Council of Ministers. And from there now, that is when they discuss. And from the Council of Ministers, it is now escalated to the summit level. And uh, the interlink that you are talking about is because we have this chair of the Council of Ministers who interlinks now to the, uh, to the summit. And that is where that, pro that process goes through. Yeah. So it is from the assembly yes. to the Council of Ministers mm -hmm. and to the summit, which is now the top organ yeah. or the decision making now. Yeah. And we have this other ex-official also, like the, the legal advisor, of the of the assembly yes and remember this is also a parliament that is not yet autonomous yeah. it is non autonomous autonomous yeah. we actually strictly follow what is in the street in the treaty mm -hmm. so uh, we we have also so we have also this uh, the the chief legal of, uh, advisor we have the, with the we have the council yeah. of, of of the ministers yeah. and that is how we now 
get interlinked to each other. Yeah. yeah. So, so it, it then means, um, going by your submissions, that all partner states have ministers appointed specifically for the East African Affairs who will come before you the plenary. Exactly. Yeah. Every partner state yeah. has a minister in charge of East African Affairs. Yeah. And those are now the council members. And they are the people re responsible also to link the national governments to the assembly and put to the summit. They act, they act as a go between now. Yeah. yeah, between the summit, the assemblies, and the partner states. Mm -hmm. All right. When we get back from the break, Honorable Fatuma, uh, then we'll proceed with the discussion on then the criteria for then how does the Minister for East African Affairs from South Sudan come before the plenary, you Honorable Members, and uh, how do you arrive at the conclusion that this time it's from Uganda, this time it's from Kenya, or this time it's from Tanzania? And then thereafter, what happens? I'll start with you when we get back from the break. And the hashtag on X is daybreak. The SMS code is 22422 at Citizen TV Kenya and at Ayub Abrikadir. Also, after the break, we'll talk about the expanded free trade area and negotiations between members of the East African community and the question of tariffs. At times, the standoff between member states with regards to trade between the member states that make up the East African community and though diplomatically solved, how that can be anchored in terms of uh, the Federation's aspiration of uh, the easing of trade between member states and how this will help in turn the economic growth of the region. We'll be back after the break here on the broadcast agent.